Come on, everybody, let's stand up to our feet and begin to worship the Lord. Good morning. Come on, stand up to your feet. Let's all stretch our hands up as an act of worship, as an act of surrender, just asking God to come in and have his way. God, come in and do a great and mighty work in our lives. Oh, Lord, we need you this morning. We need you in our lives. Oh, Lord, have your way today, Jesus. We thank you today, Father, that we are here, Lord, after so much that has happened, Lord God, in the past of our lives, Lord Jesus. I am grateful to be in the house of the Lord. I am grateful to be able to worship you. I am grateful. How many is grateful to be able to worship God this morning in your right mind? How many is grateful to be standing up, to be able to be in the house of the Lord? How many is grateful? I am grateful, Lord. And we just want to show our love to you, Father. So come in and have your way. In Jesus' name, right here. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yeah, how I love you. How I love you. I really love you. I really love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Yes, I praise you. Yes, I praise you. How I praise you. Just for who you are, just for who you are, in all, in all of your glory, my heart, my heart sings, holy, holy, you are everything, you are everything, I need, I need you to be.
bless the Lord. Hey, I will bless the Lord. Jesus Christ. Make sure you get your notepads out, get your Bible out. You're going to want to mark some scriptures. It's going to be an anointed, powerful word today. So if you're online, we want you to hit that share button so we can reach a lost and dying world with the love of Jesus Christ. You will be amazed at who will be scrolling through, pick up on what you have shared, listen to the word of God, and their life will be transformed so you change them for eternity. You can change someone's eternity so hit the share button well we just want to welcome you thank you for being with us today god has truly done great things just like the song said if you're a witness to that just wave your hand in the air god has done great things and we give him all the praise honor and glory we're going to start with psalms 107 verse 20 he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Aren't we grateful for the goodness of God? Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness, God. We are grateful people, and we just want to pause to say thank you. Thank you for being in our midst today. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your deliverance power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory that is due unto your name. Amen and amen. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Well, God is good. Glad that you're here this morning. Somebody put your hands together and just give the Lord a praise. Stretch your elbow all the way up. Let's reach up to our Father. Father, thank you for all your help in our lives. Thank you for healing all of our diseases. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for your goodness. We come to worship you. We come to magnify your name. We come to thank you for all that you are in our lives. You are bigger than any problem that we might have. You are bigger than any situation that we're going through. You are bigger than any disease, any illness in our lives. You are bigger than any problem. We just want to say thank you for all your help. Somebody just shout help in Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Will you welcome Minister Booker Nubins as he leads us in prayer, praying for our children. God is a good God. He loves you. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and 16 to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. What an honor it is to pray for our children this morning. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day, Father God. First of all, Lord, I want to thank you for waking us up this morning and just to be here in your presence and, and within presence of one another today, Father God. Lord, we come to you this day, Father God. You said to come to you with everything, Father God. So, Lord, we're coming to you with our children, our most precious possessions, Father God. The very children, Lord, you lent to us, Father God. You allowed us to, to, to raise them, Father God. Without, with your, without your knowledge, without your wisdom, Father God, things will not be possible, Father God. So, Lord, I pray, oh, Father God, for our children today. I pray for each and every young man, oh, Father God. I thank you, oh, Father God, for the relationship that they have with you, Father God. You said to train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they should not depart from it, Father God. 
Lord, I pray for peace for our children today, a peace that passes all understanding, Father God. I pray that you keep their minds free, Father God. I ask that you help them, Lord, whatever decision-making they may have, Father God, as they go back to school, Father God. I pray that you help them with friendship relationship, Lord. I pray for your protection upon our youth, Father God. Protect them from car accidents, Father God. Protect them from gang shooting, Father God. Protect over them, Father God. And last, Lord, I pray for their minds, Lord. Will you keep their minds, Father God, in perfect peace. Keep their minds stayed on you, Father God. Give them wisdom, Father God. Give them discernment, oh, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. God is good. He loves you and everything is going to be all right. Just keep walking by faith. Somebody say by faith. Grab somebody by the hand. Well, no, don't, don't grab them by the hand. Just raise your hand. Just lift your hands. I, I, I feel somebody with a heavy heart. There's something wrong. And let's just pray about it. Amen. Just know the Lord's going to work it out. Somebody say he's going to work it out. Somebody say he's going to work it out. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. In the end, you are going to win. God's going to bring you through it. Somebody say, I receive that. You got to know the Lord is on your side. Touch your elbow all the way up. Father, lift every heart. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. Somebody just shout, the blood. Come on, shout it again. The blood. The blood of Jesus over our lives, over our families, over our children today, and over our relationship. We thank you for the oil of joy the oil of gladness thank you for all of your help we come boldly to the throne to say that you are our help and our shield on this day the blood of jesus in jesus name i pray somebody say amen would you welcome pastor kyle spell as he lead us through communion on this day okay at this time we want all the kids to go okay thank you god bless you the youth will stay in on this day Praise God. Hallelujah. A couple things. If you have your sacraments, you can go ahead and please stand. And if you don't have a sacrament already, the ushers will get them to you. Just raise your hand as well. In the word of God in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the 27th verse reads, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of the, this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. And so before we... Uh, share and partake in communion on this day we want to examine ourselves amen and so the subject matter we want to examine ourselves with today is in the area of trust in the Lord so the Word of God says in in in, in Proverbs uh, uh, 3 5 and 6 says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path amen Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Er, we're going to pause right there because that's where the problem lies a lot of times is in your own understanding. Your own understanding would be the, the thing that would set those barriers that are in place to, to keep you from coming into the full revelation, the full knowledge the full exposure of what God is wanting to do in your life in that moment, in that time, in that season. Remember his word says that his ways are not our ways. Remember that his word says that his thoughts are not our thoughts. Remember that his word says that there is nothing that is impossible to God. So why is it that we don't trust him? Because maybe it doesn't look the way we think it ought to look sometimes. The word of God in James, the first chapter, in the second through the uh, fourth verse says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. One translation says when you fall into to, to, to various trials. 
knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing the problem that we uh, uh, that we go through when we when it comes to trusting in the lord with all of our heart and leaning and not into our own understanding is sometimes god isn't moving in our timing Sometimes God isn't moving in the way that we've been praying exactly. You, you know, we, we get exactly how we want it to go. And so, God, we want you to do it this way. And, and it makes perfect sense to me. But, but God is saying, hold up. Check it. I'm God. You're not. <laughs> My ways are better than your ways. And I... If memory serves correct, and if the word of God serves correct, there time after time and all throughout the word of God, you see God stepping into a situation. You see God making a way where there was no way, but you see God doing it in a way that doesn't make no kind of sense. Joshua, travel and march around the wall seven times. Don't attack the wall, just march around it and then blow the horns and, and lift, shout a little praise and, and the walls will come tumbling down. Jehoshaphat, you're going to go up against armies. You're outnumbered. Children of Israel, you're outnumbered. But what I want you to do is I want you to set yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of God. Jesus healing the blind, taking spit and spitting in the dirt and, and putting a clay on his eyes, and now the, the blind can see. Moses, Pharaoh's army is behind you, but stretch out forth your rod and, and see the salvation of God as he parts the Red Sea. makes no kind of sense but God makes no kind of sense but God yes I know Lazarus has been dead for three days and he stinketh but this must be so so that the glory of the Lord might be revealed. And that's the word of God to you today. You might be going through a circumstance. You might be going through a fight. You might be dealing with the devil of hell himself. But stand ye still and see the salvation of God. See the glory of the Lord step into your situation. that the glory of the Lord might be revealed. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Then of course our Lord and Savior our Lord and Savior. You see, the rulers of the day, they, they were expecting a great king, muscle-bound in authority, riches in all glory. They were not expecting a Savior to come as a child, born in a manger to save the world. Makes no kind of sense. Jesus said to the disciples what was going to have to take place that he was going to have to go and die. He was going to be beaten, pierced, hung on a cross. And Peter said, no, not on my watch, Jesus. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. It didn't make no kind of sense. All this is done that we would trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not into our own understanding. 
So let a man examine himself. Father, forgive us for times when we've last, lapsed in our trust in you, Lord. Forgive us for times when we did not trust you, Lord God. Trust in your perfect will. Trust in your, your perfect way. And Father, we honor you today. Father, thank you, Lord God, for revealing to us just how God you are. And Father, we praise you today. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus in the same night which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. So peel back the first layer. I'm, I can't peel mine back. <laughs> I don't have fingernails. Praise God. Praise God. Do you have an extra one, Pastor? Thank you, Jesus. And take out the wafer inside. This is represents Christ's body. And I want you to take it and I want you to break it. You hear that sound? That represents his body that was broken for you. Amen. Father, we thank you for your body, which was broken for each and every one of us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your ultimate sacrifice. You paid the price to let us know that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, to let us know that you were all in. And Father, in your love for us, and we love you today, in Jesus' name, you may eat. And after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. And we take the blood. This, this cup represents the blood of Jesus. And we hold it up a little bit higher than our heads. Just saying that our lives, our families, our relationships, our finances, our jobs, our careers, our destiny, our path, Lord God, is covered under the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers our homes. The blood of Jesus covers our children. The blood of Jesus covers our minds, our hearts, our spirits. The blood of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for us, Lord God. You bled out for us, Lord God. You couldn't bleed no more for us. It didn't make no kind of sense, Lord God, but you did it for ultimate victory because you are undefeated and you never lost. <laughs> Father, we love you today. Thank you for your blood. In Jesus' name, you may drink. God bless you, family. you 
are God. For you are God and God alone. Because, because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say. I just want to say. Everybody should be singing right now. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, we're going to make it personal this morning right here. I love you, Jesus. Just wanna tell, just want to tell you what I love you more than anything. Right here, I love you, I love you, Jesus. Come on, I worship, I worship.
Come on, say it. with all of our heart. Take your Bible this morning. Glad you're in the house of the Lord. Let's get into the word of the Lord. The grass wither, the flower will fade, but the Bible says the word of the Lord will, pa- will stand what? Forever. Take your Bible this morning. Go with me to 2 Timothy. Uh, go with me to 2 Timothy chapter number 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Glad that you're here. God is a good God. He loves you. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Do you have it? If you have it, say amen. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse number 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. Let's go really, verse 3. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Then go down to verse number 5. When I call to remembrance the un feign faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy what grandmother Lois and thy what mother Eunice and I am persuaded that it is in thee also wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou should stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the laying on or putting on of hands somebody say amen I want to talk with you this morning about how the anointing works in a family. How the anointing works in a family. Be patient. I've been struggling with this message for a number of days, a number of weeks. So raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you most of all for your anointing. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the spirit of the Lord. It's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit. We need your help. Somebody just shout, help! We need your help in all that we do today. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for those on live stream and Zoom. Just know God loves you and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. You may be going through difficulties, but it's going to be all right because the Lord is on your side. Somebody say amen. Many families have what Paul is talking about here, the generational anointing, but they don't realize it. And therefore, from generation to generation, thou art God. The anointing flows from generation to generation. That's why you got to pray over your children. That's why you must do all that you can to encourage them to walk by faith and not by what? Sight. They, and you have to know, teach them, and you have to understand how to tap into the anointing of God in your life and in your family. And you have to understand that it makes all the difference in our lives. God has anointed you and your family with fresh oil, and there's an anointing on your family, and you just got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. No matter who you are, God loves you and he wants your family to be blessed and he wants them to be anointed. Somebody say amen. You have to work. You have to work at it and sacrifice and work at it. Somebody say work your faith. It will draw other family members that, will, that are not saved. It will draw them to the foot of the cross. Somebody say amen. Daily you have to sacrifice for the anointing. Many families, God has really anointed them, and they don't even realize how anointed they are. And so, but I want to remind somebody today that you have God's anointing upon your life, and the enemy goal is to make you discouraged, to make you mad and sad, and make you frustrated, and make you fight each other. Somebody say amen. But we must live by God's design. And his design is his laws, his word. We must live by his covenants, his statutes, and we must know that God has touched your life. Somebody say, the Lord has touched my life. With the heart of daily repentance and a heart 
of obedience, the anointing will begin to manifest. What is that anointing? It's God's power. Somebody say power. Somebody say power. Many families, God has touched them and God has blessed them, but they don't even realize it. And the devil want to keep you in ignorant when it comes to the anointing and God's power upon your life. If you are here today, God has touched your life. Somebody say, I'm blessed. The anointing permeates every facet of your family down to your least child, the grandchildren, the great grands, or whoever's in your family. It touches everyone, and it will bless your family, and it will help you. But the enemy will fight you. He will fight you in this area right here. We must understand and know how it works in the life of the believer. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Isaiah 61 and, and 1 said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to do what? You know, to bind up the broken heart, to give the all of joy for the garment of praise. And you have to know that God will bless you to overcome heaviness. Somebody say, I'm blessed. It's not just for the leadership in church, or pastors and all. It's for the people of God. Your family is blessed. Somebody say, we are blessed. Somebody say, we are blessed. Psalm 45 and 7 says, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Somebody say, we are anointed. Joshua 24, 15 says, as for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. As for we and me and my house, and that is a declaration that you must do with certainty. That is a declaration that you must do knowing that the Lord is on my side. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. Many families go through life. And they don't realize that God has anointed them with special gifts and special talents. John 1.12 says, but as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. When you accept Jesus Christ into your life, there's a power, there's an anointing, there's a presence of God that comes in your life. But you got to stir it up. You got to keep it fresh. You got to work on it every day. Somebody say every day. God formed man of the dust of the ground in Genesis chapter 2. And he formed them. He, the Lord blessed him, breathed into him the breath of life. And then further down in that chapter, chapter 221, he formed a woman. God put man to sleep, took out one of his ribs, the first surgeon, and, made, and the Bible says he fashioned her. So every woman, there's something that looks good about her. Somebody say amen. He empowered them, Adam and Eve, in the garden. He anointed them in the garden. He blessed them in the garden. But the enemy didn't like it. And he doesn't like you, he doesn't like your family, and he doesn't like any of us, especially when we know that we have God's favor. Somebody say favor. So he will come and fight you. He will fight your church, I'm telling you. He will show up. Old devils in hell that's retired will get up, get on their crutcher, and come to the front line. And all they can do is fan the argument, fan the disagreement, fan the foolishness. Somebody say, pray now. But you got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Many of God's families don't know nothing about how they are anointed. Somebody pray for me today. I'm on an assignment. My assignment is to remind you that God has anointed you for victory. And we must do all that we can to make sure that our little children know about it. He told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 3, Abraham, in you I want all families to be blessed. That is the heartbeat of God. He wants your family to be blessed. But I have to remind you, the enemy is going to fight you. But you got to fight back. Somebody say, fight back. Somebody say, fight back. Somebody say, fight back. Now go with me. I'm going to give you five areas where the Lord has anointed your family. Write it down. Go back and look at the video on Facebook again. Because you need to get it in your heart that we have God's help. Somebody say, help. You're not walking by yourself. 
God is helping you. He's bringing you through. I want my wife to get for me Psalm 89, verse number 20 to 24. Psalms 89, verse number 20 to 24. God has anointed your family. And he wants you to be blessed. And you got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. That's why he fights you and the enemy will fight you in, the, in, in your family. He will fight you in your marriage. He'll fight you with your children. He'll fight you as you try and do things with your extended family. He will fight you. Nothing is worse than when families fight. The devil gets full power. It's like your cell phone he, when it gets charged all the way up. When families fight, the devil gets full power. His demons get full power. Somebody say amen. amen. But you have to know that you are smarter than that. Look at the neighbor and say, I'm smarter than that. I'm going to fight him and not each other. He wants you to fight each other. He wants you to be mad at one another. He wants you to discourage one another. He wants you to trip each other up. He wants you to not work together. It's a curse. But you got to pray against it. Somebody say, the blood. Somebody say, the blood. More and more, he is fighting us harder and harder as families. But my assignment today is to get you to stir it up in your family. Stir it up in your faith. If you stir it up in your house, it'll be stirred up in the community. If you stir it up in the community, it'll be stirred up in the church. If you stir it up in the church, it'll be stirred up on your job. If you stir it up on your job, it'll be stirred up in your finances. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Psalms 89, verse number 20 to 24. Please read. I have found David my servant. Uh -huh. With my holy oil have I anointed him. Yes. With whom my hand shall be established. Yes. Mine arm also shall strengthen him. Yes. The enemy shall not exalt upon him. Uh -huh. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Yes. And I will beat down his foes before his face. Yes. And plague them that hate him. Yes. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Yes. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. Five areas there where God anoints the family. David was a man after God's heart. God loved him. God anointed David, he anointed his family, and the devil fought him at every turn, at every juncture. The, the enemy fought him, and you have to know he's going to fight you too, but you got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. There's an anointing on your life, and you are blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. The first place where God anoints the family is God anoints the family with his own hands. Verse number 20, God anointed David with his oil. And God anoints families. God has anointed you. Not your grandmother, not your grandpa. God has to anoint you. Not the pastor, not the bishop, not the apostle. God himself has to anoint your family. God has to anoint it. Now, they can activate it and get it started. When Samuel anointed David, he activated the anointing in David's life. So that's their role is just to activate it. But David went back to the sheep and began to work on that anointing. He began to sing. He began to play. He began to worship God. And it began to grow in his life. Somebody say, I'm anointed. The Lord has to anoint your life. The Lord has to lay his hands on your family. The Lord has to lay his hand on all your children. And he has to touch them. Somebody say amen. So every day we have to ask the Lord, Lord, anoint me to get the job what? Done. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. When God anoints a family, he's always with them. Unless they just disrespect him and leave him and go off and do their own thing. He anointed Abraham, he anointed Isaac, and he anointed Jacob. And they were blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Isaac was so blessed that in the time of the famine, the Bible says that he went out and dug a well. And water came up in the middle of the desert because God had anointed him. And he was blessed. The Philistine came and took that well. So he said, that's all right. I got the blessing on my life. 
I got the anointing on my life. He went over and dug another well. And the Bible said water came up out of the ground. See, when God anoints your family, you can overcome every obstacle. You can overcome every problem. You can overcome every situation. But a lot of times, we cower, we back up, we don't pray, we don't stir it up, and we live in failure. But my assignment is to remind you, there's an anointing on your life. Somebody say, I am anointed by God. God's heart is to empower families and his people. God's heart. But you must know how to maintain it. You must know how to protect it. You must know how to shield it. You must know how to manage it. You must know how to live with the abundant faith and the power of God upon your life. And many are not aware that they are anointed. The enemy keeps them blind to the power of working in their lives. Families are so important to God, especially in them this day. But the enemy hates anointed families. The enemy does not like them. He doesn't like you to come to the church and get it stirred up. He doesn't like you to pray and get it stirred up. He doesn't want you to read the word of God and stir up the anointing in your life. So he, he does everything he can to discourage you and to stop you. He fights them. He targets anointed families. He curses them. He tricks them. He assigns demons to families for generations. That's why you have to watch your kids and your little babies. The enemy could assign devils to follow them and haunt them and torment them most of their lives. And you got to plead the blood. Somebody say, the blood! When you drop them off at school, anoint them with oil. When I would drop my boys off, I would anoint them with oil and pray over them. Because I knew they were going into the devil's territory. The enemy hates families. And he'll target people. That's why some people got molested when they're little. That's why some girls got taken advantage of. That's why some boys got taken advantage of. And boys don't talk about it when things happen to them. But it's the assignment of the enemy upon their life because he know, I ain't got no help in here, he know they are anointed. Your children are anointed. Your grandkids are anointed. Your great grands are anointed. We got to wake up and stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Stir it up. When you send them off to college, it's important that you pray for them every day. Somebody say, every day. There are demons assigned to universities. Been there. Done that. Got the t-shirt. Been there. Demons assigned to universities. Don't think that you're sending little Jimmy off to school. The devil know that Jimmy comes out of anointed home. And he's going to target Jimmy. He's going to follow him every class. He's going to follow him wherever he go around campus. He's going to follow him. And he's going to torment him. And he's going to try and get him to mess up. Somebody say amen. But we got to pray now. Somebody say pray now. Somebody say pray now. Somebody say pray now. He assigned demonic forces to your children. He assigned demonic forces to your children. Let me say it again. He assigns demonic forces against your kids. And you must educate your children and tell them who we are. I would tell my boys all the time, we don't do drugs. We don't run women. We try to live for God and help broken humanity. Somebody say amen. You got to tell them. Somebody say, tell them. Tell them what you told them. And tell them again. Because the devil want them ignorant to the anointing upon their life. He want them addicted to drugs. He want them hanging out with hoes. He want them running the streets. He want them living a reckless life. Somebody say help. Somebody say help. Online, somebody say help. Families must understand the anointing that's upon their lives. How many of you had great-grandma and grandma praying for you years ago? Let me see your hand. Then there's an anointing on your life. 
there's a presence on your life. God's favor is with you. But the enemy tries to blind you. He tell you that them old grandma prayer, she's dead and gone. Prayers never die. Somebody say amen. Prayers never die. And you got to understand how it works. Number one, God anoints families. From generation to generation. That's why Paul, being the great apostle, having the great spiritual eyes, looked at Timothy and said, boy, I, I, I see it on you. It was on your grandmama. It was on your mama. And I see it on you. Now, I charge you to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Many of our NFL players and many of our NFL, NBA athletes are there because of great grandmothers and fathers that prayed for them. They didn't get there because they were so talented. It was the prayers of their mama and their grandmama and their great-grandmama that said, Lord, bless my baby. Lord, take him all the way to the top. Lord, give him an opportunity. Am I in the right church today? We're going to understand about the anointing around Emmanuel Christian Center. Somebody say amen. There's an anointing on your life. Somebody say, I am anointed by the hand of Almighty God. We must understand why God anointed us. Disobedience destroys the anointing upon your life. Disobedience messes up the flow of God's power in a family. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Disobedience takes families off track. Disobedience get them off focus. Disobedience get them out of bounds. They are not where they're supposed to be because they're living a reckless life. Somebody shout, help! When God anoints your family, he has, a, he has a role for them to play. He has something he wants them to do to build the kingdom. Somebody say amen. To help win souls. When a couple gets married and join their lives together, it's not because he loves her so much. It's not because she loved him so much. It's because God sees something in them that he wants them to do. So he anoints them for the task. Somebody say amen. And they think, I just love Ray Ray. I just love Jenny May. No, God put the love in your heart for him or her because he has an assignment, a divine assignment for their life. Somebody say, I'm blessed. And then he gives them gifts and abilities to get the job what? Because it's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, come on, live stream. Say, Lord, I receive your anointing over my family. Come on, help me out. Somebody say, Lord, I receive your anointing over my life. I am blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Number two, the second area where God anoints the family is in verse number 21. He, God's anointing, establishes the family. He, he establishes the family. He establishes them. And God will bless them and help them. 2 Corinthians 1 and 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Somebody say, it's the Lord. God anoints families way before sometime they get in the womb. In Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. I had ordained you. I had brought you to a place of where I was going. I'm going to use you to help the nations. Somebody say amen. That's why when you get pregnant, you ought to pray over that baby. Don't kill it. You ought to pray over the baby. Somebody say pray over the baby. Somebody say pray over the baby. God says in your mama's womb, I anointed you. Let's look at Samson. In Samson's mother's womb, God anointed him. In the womb, he was blessed and anointed and empowered in the womb. 
So when he came out and started fighting the Philistines, he wasn't just doing something to be doing it. He had God's power in his life. Somebody say power. But Samson disrespected and dishonored and discredited his parents and God. And Mr. Lila got a hold of Sammy baby. And when Mr. Lila got a hold of Sammy baby, she said, Sammy, tell me where your strength lie, baby boy. I know you got the goods. You killed the Philistine. You took a jawbone and you destroyed my people. Where's your strength, lie, Sammy, baby? Come here, let me rub your cheeks. She laid his hand on, head on her lap, the Bible said, and rubbed. And then Sammy got all broken up and said, let me tell you, Delilah, baby girl, my strength is in my hair. God told his mom, Manoah, from be before he was born, don't cut his hair. There's an area in your life, hear me now, there's an area in your life where it's God's anointing. It is a source it is the source of God's anointing in your life. There's an area in your life. I don't know what it is. For some people, it's their voice when they sing. That's the area of God's anointing. So if you ever know how to sing, you ought to get in the choir and sing because you stir it up in your life. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. In Luke chapter 1, verse 41, John, baby John in his mama's womb, leaped when he came in the presence of Jesus. See, God anoints your kids from the womb. And that's why we have to be careful how we take care of them because you don't know who you're caring. You don't know who you're taking care of. You don't know who you're dealing with. You could be dealing with somebody that comes strictly from the hand of God. And if you destroy them, oh, Lord, somebody say, help. You and your family must live an anointed life and do all that you can to stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Too many families are living beneath their privileges. They're fighting. They're arguing. They're fussing. They're disagreeing. They're not getting along. They're not sharing the money. They're living their own life. They're being mean to each other. That's not God's plan. It's never been God's plan for his people. God is trying to take you to the next level. When God brought you together he saved you and he anointed you and he has a plan for your life. And that's why when the devil fight families, if they fight back, they win almost all the time because they stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. The Lord has blessed you. The Lord has anointed you. Call on the prayers of the generations gone by. Call on the prayers of great-grandmother that used to go to church in a white dress all the time. Call on the prayers of your great-grandfather who used to be a deacon in the church and used to come up front and pray. Call on the prayers of the saints gone by that impact your life because it's planted in your heart. All you have to do is stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. You are not here by accident. There's a power in your life. There's an anointing on your life. There's a blessing in your life. You are on a divine assignment. Somebody say, I am on a divine assignment. In this season with COVID, you are not here by accident. God allowed you to live. Romans 8, 11 said the same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body. And you got the goods. Somebody say, I got the goods. Oh, somebody talk to me. Say, I got the goods. It's in your family. Stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. The third area where God anoints families, number one, God anoints them by his own hand. Number two, he establishes them. And number three, in Psalms 89 and verse 21, God strengthens them. Your family is strong because the Lord is with you. Your family got through the problems because the Lord was on your side. Your family got through the demonic battle because the Lord has strengthened you. The anointing releases infinite power, possibilities into your life and into your families. But when something happens, what families do is turn on each other. And that's the worst thing they can do because they empower the devil. Don't empower the demons. Work together. 
Somebody say, work together. My mom had one dying wish on her deathbed. She said, I want all of y'all. We were all standing around her bed. She said, I want all of y'all to get along. She said, I want all of y'all. When you make a decision, even if you don't agree with it, but if everybody make the decision, she said, get along. Her dying wish was get along. And I believe that's the dying wish of many parents and fathers is for their kids to get along. And then she, she turned her head to the window and said, Lord, L-A-U-D, help my children to get along. Somebody say amen. It stirred us all up. Somebody say amen. It stirred, see, as a parent, you got to stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. You can't afford to be quiet. You can't afford to be silent. You can't afford to not tell your son who he is, where he came from, and what's important in your family. We serve the Lord. God is our help. Somebody just shout, help. Number one, how does God, how does the anointing works in a family? God anoints it with his own hands. Number two, God establishes a family. Verse 21. And number three, God strengthens the family. Somebody say amen. But you have to know Psalm 92 and verse 10. It says that I have been anointed with fresh oil. God anoints you when you stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. And then God anoints families with special gifts. He anoints them with special talents. He anoints them with special abilities. Some families he anoint in the area of finances. He anoint them in the area of finances. Some families he anoint in the area of leadership. Some families he anoint in the area of singing. Everybody know the whinings can sing. Their grandkids can sing. But you have to understand, if you don't know your anointing, you'll end up in, 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 in problems. The same way one of the whining boys today sit behind prison bars because he didn't know the anointing that was on his family and he didn't live it out. So he tried to trick people financially, ended up in prison, still there today. You got to tell your children how the anointing works. You got to tell them that God will bless us. We don't have to steal nothing. We don't have to rip nobody off. We don't have to be mean, mean to each other. We just have to serve the Lord. Somebody say, serve the Lord. God anoint families with special gifts. Preaching. I got a friend of mine that was in Oklahoma. He got four sons, and all of them are pastors in great churches. Because his great-granddad was a pastor. His granddad was a pastor. He became a pastor. And the anointing flowed to all his boys. Somebody say amen. You have to understand, I'm anointed. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Some people God blesses and anoint with hospitality. They will serve and take care. Some people God bless with business anointing. There is a business anointing that comes on your life. And everything you do in business, God will bless. He will send people to help you. He will assign people to help you. He will, he, he will command people to go and help you. Why? Because you are operating under the business anointing. Anybody know what I'm talking about in here? There's an anointing of consulting. When you sit down and talk to people, it just gives them thousands of ideas, and they get the job what? Done. There's an anointing of administration that God anoints on families. And you got to know who you are. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Somebody say, I'm anointed. It's more than coming to church to sing a song. It's more than coming to church to pray a prayer. It's more than coming to church to read the Bible. It is a daily power that works in your life, that works in your family, that helps you. Somebody say, help. Your gift is not just to make money. When God gives these athletes these billion-dollar gifts, it's not for them just to make money for themselves and go out on a boat with strip, strippers and have a party and throw up $100 bills and it floats into the ocean. That's not the plan. Somebody say, that's not the plan. 
He gifted them to build the kingdom. He gifted them to help broken humanity. He gifted them and he gifted you to help somebody. Somebody shout, help! God anoints families and empowers them and enables them to get the job done, to move the kingdom of God forward. Somebody say forward. How does the anointing work in the family? God anoints it with his own hand. He establishes the family. He strengthens the family. And you have to know you are still here. Let COVID roar. You are still here. Let the coronavirus dominate. You are still here. Somebody say, I'm still here. Why are you still here, Pastor? Because God has anointed your life. He has touched your life with his own hand. And he has blessed you. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Look at your neighbor say, I'm blessed. That's why you're able to go forward. And even if the coronavirus got you, God made you bounce back. God helped you. Somebody say, help. That's why you got to get back in church. That's why we got we to gotta make sure that we come back to the house of the Lord. God said, build me a sanctuary that I might dwell among you. The Lord is present. The Lord is our help. The Lord is our shield. God is on our side. We are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody say, man, that's why you got to get back to the house. Look at neighbor. Say, neighbor. Get your family back to church. Say it again. Get your family back to church. Many families will miss God's destiny for them because they're listening to the wrong voices. How does God anoint the family? Number one, he anoints it with his own hand. And number two, he established them. Number three, he strengthens them. And, him, and, and he blesses them. See, as a family, you got to know that the Lord is on our side. Somebody say amen. My, you got to know, wife, the Lord is on your side. You can't mess with Ray Ray. Ray Ray have no anointing on his life. But your husband might be struggling, but God's anointed him in just a matter of time before the cream rise to the top. I mean, you can't look at, you, you can't look at Jenny May, Diva Jenny May. Diva Jenny May has no anointing on her life. She didn't even come from a generation of the anointing. She was like the Delilah family. She might be fine and curved and all that other stuff, hair flowing, nails sparking and everything. She ain't got no anointing. Somebody say, she ain't got no anointing. She'll mess up your life. At time, I tell you the story of my preacher friend. But I ain't got time. I'm going to leave it alone. I feel my wife breathing on my neck. I can't tell it, Joel. Leave me alone. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to stay in the Bible. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. But she ain't got no anointing. Man, go home to your wife. She's the woman God assigned for you. I'm talking to somebody out there. Go home. Lady, go home. Don't be going out with your girlfriends. They ain't got no anointing. They come from the Delilah generation. They go mess up your life, mess up your blessings, mess up your favor, and you're going to die alone. Somebody say, help. Somebody help me say, help. I got to hurry. Number four. How does God anoint a family? How does God anoint a family? How does God anoint a family? Number four says in verse 23 that he's going to beat down your foes right before your eyes. The devil's going to attack you. If I told you the times that we've been attacked, if I told you the time, you wouldn't believe it. The devil's going to attack you. But you got to stay together. Somebody say amen. You got to have somebody that when the going gets tough, they get in the foxhole with you. 
They don't blame you. They don't point their fingers at you. Somebody say amen. My wife had favor with me. When the going gets tough and the enemy comes, she get in right there with me. She pray with me, stand with me, fight with me, and when God bring us out on the other side. See, you got to know the anointing is stirred up when you get into a battle. The anointing is stirred up when you get through difficult times. Somebody say amen. Don't worry about your haters. Don't worry about your, your, your enemies. Don't worry about the people that talk bad about you. You will go to their funeral. Only one person heard that that said, oh, I had some haters, but I went to their funerals. And I'm still here because the Lord is on my side. I don't say it out of pride and arrogance. I say it because I understand the anointing. I understand how God works in a family. I understand that God has given you favor. Somebody say favor. Somebody say favor. And you will outlast your haters. You will outlast the people that talk about you. You will outlast the people that laugh at you. You will outlast the people that say you ain't going nowhere. Somebody say, I am blessed. I got to tell you, some of them say, we ain't going nowhere when we're in the school. They say, they ain't going nowhere. But we are still here. And they're not even in ministry today. Somebody say, I am blessed. You got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. The anointing sustain you. God will help you. Somebody say, help. He says in verse 23, God will plague them that hate on you. Just go through the battle. Put your shoes on. Put your boxing gloves on. And just show up to the battle. Just show up. God's going to fight for you. Just show up. Just show up. But a lot of times, we don't want to show up. I just feel bad today. I'm discouraged today. I don't have the energy for it today. You better show up. Somebody say, show up. Show up for the fight. Because the anointing on your family is going to help you to get through. And when the saints start praying for you, oh, man. That's why as a church we got to know how to pray. That's why as a church we got to stand together. That's why as a church we got to do life together. That's why as a church, because every time we pray together, we stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Too many families are fighting by themselves. Too many families are walking by themselves because they don't want to submit to the authority of God's house. God will beat down your foes. He'll sustain you in the most difficult time. Somebody say amen. The anointing will help you to fight off every battle. To fight off every battle that comes your way. Somebody say, I'm blessed. God will bless you and anoint you when you honor him and when you pray to him and when you praise him. See, don't let, the, don't let your anointing take you somewhere. Your integrity can't keep you. See, that's happened to a lot of families. God anoint them, and their anointing take them places where their character and integrity can't keep them. As you raise your children, you got to teach them what it means to be anointed by God. God will put you at the front of the line. But when you get to the front of the line, don't act a fool. Smile and wave. Oh! Smile and wave. One of my favorite athletes in the Olympics is a thing new. She's a girl. She's a bad runner. She's phenomenal. When she got on camera, she looks totally African. But when she got on camera, she was so articulate. She was so precise. And she was so humble. Man, I just said, I like her. So I watched her again, and she did the same thing. When, teach your sons. Teach your, I'm trying to help somebody. Teach your daughters. That when they get to the top, don't act a fool. When you get the million dollar deal, don't act a fool. Somebody say, help. 
the worst thing that some families can do is get to the top and not be nice to people. Somebody say amen. That's why when I go on a trip, I like to book at a five-star hotel. Why, Pastor? Because there they treat you better. You can go to them two-star hotels, three stars if you want. You go down for a towel, they're going to say, we gave you one earlier. But at a five-star hotel, they're going to say, how many do you need, Mr. Simpkins? How many do you need one for your wife? Do you need one for your children? Do you need one? How many, how many towels do you need? It's worth the money to be treated right. Because if you're down, some people live like they're down. They act like they're down. They walk like they're down. They talk down. They are negative. But you are anointed. Somebody say, I am anointed. How does the anointing work in a family? Number one, God's anointing them with his own hands. Number two, he establishes them. Number three, he strengthens them. And number four, he'll beat down your foes. They're not going to win. Let them talk. Somebody said, let them talk. I had people that talked about us. They ain't going nowhere in that school. Let them talk. We are blessed. We got our own building. We're still standing. And they're not even in ministry. Because of the anointing. Somebody say, I'm blessed. May not be the biggest church in town. But bigger is not always better. Oh. Somebody say, man. You got to get in where you fit in. You got to get in where God calls you. You got to get in where God anoints you. You got to get in where God's anointing is flowing. You got to get in where the word is alive. Somebody say, I am blessed. See, I don't want you ignorant. It was the anointing that saved my family. It was the anointing that saved us. In difficult times. In highly warfare times. It was the anointing that saved us. Don't let your anointing take you where your integrity and character can't keep you. Because when God anoints a family, he intends to take them to the top. But a lot of times, they mess it up. Somebody say amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm anointed for the top. Oh, somebody help me say, I'm anointed for the top. Say it again. Look somebody in the eye. Look them in that black spot in the eyes and say, I'm anointed for the top. I'm anointed for the top. You're going to get there because the Lord is on your side. Don't worry about your boss. You're going to have his job. You're going to have her job because there's anointing on your life. The Lord has blessed you. Somebody say, I am blessed. Come on, holler to the spirit world. Say, I am blessed. I close with number five. How does the anointing work in a family? God himself anoints them. Same way he did Samson. Same way he did his own son. Same way he did John the Baptist. The same way he did Moses. God anointed the family. And number two, he establishes them. They last. Number three, he strengthens them. And they are able to overcome and they are sustained. All through life. And number four, he beats down your enemies. That's why you got to plead the blood. Somebody say the blood. When I see the blood, I will command the death angel to pass over. That's why you got to plead the blood. That's why every time I get this microphone, I'm going to holler the blood. And I just want a few people that will holler with me. I don't need everybody. I just need a few people that's not ashamed on the bl- of the blood. That know the power of the blood. Somebody said the blood. Because when I see the blood, I will command the death thing. I will command the destroyer to pass over. Somebody say over. Number five and I close. God, how does the anointing work in a family? God anoints the family with his faithfulness and his mercy. Somebody say mercy. Goodness and mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life. Some of the days of your life. All the days of your life. 
When God's anointing is upon your life, goodness and mercy is going to follow you. You're never by yourself. Somebody say, I'm not alone. The Lord is on my side. There's somebody behind me. There's goodness and there's mercy following me. He says, and then there's faithfulness. God's, hasn't God been faithful to you? Anybody in the house, anybody online that know the Lord's been faithful? Anybody here that know the Lord's been good to you? Anybody here know the Lord stood with you in tough times? Anybody here know the Lord has been a faithful God? His mercy was there. His goodness was there. And his faithfulness was there. The Lord is on my side. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Somebody say, I am. Your success has little to do with you. It is the anointing of God, the power of God, the blessing of the Lord, the power of God. Your success has little to do with you. It's the generational blessing, the prayers of your great grandmother, the prayers of your mama, the prayers of your great grandmother, the prayers of your dad. You are blessed. Somebody help me say, I am blessed. You didn't get there by yourself. You're not the power woman by yourself. You got to start up. You got help. Somebody say help. Raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you for the anointing upon my life. Raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you for the anointing upon my life. I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. You got to stir it up. Stir it up. Paul told Timothy to stir it up. You're going somewhere. The Lord is on your side. You have favor. Thank the Lord every day. Thank the Lord every day for the anointing on your life. Somebody say, I am anointed for help. In Jesus' name, I pray. Somebody say, amen. Stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. You got to declare, I'm anointed to the spirit world. You got to declare, God's anointing is upon my life. I have help. Somebody say help. You got to proclaim that God has touched my life. Raise your hand and say, Lord, thank you for touching my life. Say it again. Say, Lord, thank you for touching my life. And that's why when we praise the Lord, we stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. The Lord is on my side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. And that's why we're going to stand and declare. The Lord is on my side. Somebody say, I declare the Lord is on my side. I'm going to stand and believe that the Lord is going to help me. I'm going to stand for something. Or I'm going to fall for anything. I am. Somebody say, I am. Anointed. The Lord brought you. The Lord kept you. The Lord opened doors for you. The Lord made ways for you. You ought to say thank you. The Lord's been good to you. I'm going to stand for something or I fall for anything. Somebody say, I am standing for the Lord's help. Somebody say, I am standing for the Lord's help. The Lord is on my side. I am grateful. Raise your hand and say, I am grateful. Can I get somebody to say, I am grateful. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have never made it. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, you would have never made it. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is your buckler. Don't be discouraged. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Somebody say, I am blessed. Come on, help me say, I am anointed for victory. We win. We win. Somebody say, I win. In Jesus' name, I pray. Give the Lord a hand. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
for he is good. Brought you through sickness. Brought you through pain. The Lord is my help. Just raise your hands all over the house. Somebody say to me, say, Lord, I stand in faith because I'm anointed. Say it again. Open your mouth and declare. Say it with me. Say, Lord, I stand in faith because I'm anointed to build a business, to raise the family, to get through the battle, to win the court battle. I am anointed by God. Thank you for all your help. Something good is going to happen to me. Say it again, something good is going to happen to me. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Say it again, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my help. The Lord is my shield. I am anointed. Before we close, if you're going through a battle, just come and stand with me at the altar. I just want to stir up the anointing over your life. Come on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on. You're going through a battle. You're going through a battle. Just come and stand with me, adult. Don't worry about what other people do. If you save Denver, they're going to laugh at you. They're going to talk about it. Don't worry about what people think. They can't help you. You need God's anointing. Come on. You got something you're working with. Come on. Anointing fall on, on me. Anointing let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Raise your hands and help us. Say that one more time. Raise your hands. When you sing, you are stirring it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Oh, Come on, just sing it with me. Anointing. coming to the altar. God's bless you. God's got some anointing on your life. And I want you to stir it up. I just want to pray with you. I just want to pray with you. Stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. In the audience, would you stretch your hand toward these wonderful men and women, women that have come down to the altar. Thank you. I can assure you the Lord's going to bring you through. I've been there. I can assure you the Lord's going to bring you through. Talk to Minister Marvel. I'm going to put you on the spot. Take your time. I know fall Went through a major battle. Lost her baby. How long was it? Three year battle? Two and a half years. T turn the mic on, please. Turn it up, please. Two and a half years. We prayed with you. We believed God. Yes. We stirred up the anointing. Yes. And when the dust finally settled. Yes. When the dust finally settled, you came out on time. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, we lost our daughter. I lost my daughter two and a half years ago to gun violence. And it's been a long, 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 long battle. And I can just say that God came through. Amen. Victory belongs to us. Yes, it does. Say that. Yes, victory. I, my daughter Mimi, she said, 
there will be victory after mm. this. Yes. And there is victory. On Monday, we received the verdict that the, that the person that killed my daughter received life in prison with no parole. Wow. But God. But God. But God. But God. See, when you mess with anointed people, you got to know who you're messing with. Well, you got to mess. Thank you, Minister Marv. Help her down, somebody. When you mess with anointed people, a lot of families don't know that they are anointed. But as they prayed, and as we prayed as a church and stirred up that anointing, then that God touched everybody's heart. The judge, the DA, and all involved. You anointed. Look at your neighbor and look him in the eye like you're going to punch him and say, you anointed. It's on your life. Would you raise your hand at this altar? Thank you for coming forward. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God's going to bring you through it. He's going to bring you through it, Wendy. He's going to bring you through it. Don't panic. You walk through it, and he'll bring you through it. Stretch your elbow all the way up. Somebody put it on the screen. If you walk through it, he'll bring you through it. Father, your people at the altar that you have anointed need your help. You said my eyes will be open to this place and my ears will be attentive to the prayers that are made in this house. You said it in 2 Chronicles 7.15. So we stand on that word that you'll hear our prayers. And these your people are going through battles. They're going through challenges. But we declare the Lord is on their side. We declare they will stir up. Somebody say stir it up. The anointing that's upon their lives. Give them favor. Somebody say favor. Say it again. Favor. Favor wherever they go. Favor in the court. Favor on their jobs. Favor in their business. Favor at the banks. Favor. Somebody say favor. Everybody say with me. Say Lord. I stir up the anointing upon my life. Say it again. Say Lord. I stir up the anointing upon my life. I am blessed. Say it again. I am anointed for victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Turn around and give somebody a hug and say you're holding on to an anointed person. Oh, you're anointed. The anointing of the Lord is upon your life. You are holding on to an anointed person. The anointing of the Lord is upon your family. It's upon your children. It's upon your life. Somebody say, I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Will you give the Lord one more hand clap for all of his goodness and all of his mercy in your life. Somebody say, I am blessed. You may be seated. I have you out in a few minutes. Just know God is a good God. He loves you. Somebody say amen. I took my wife to Papa Do's yesterday. And I walked in, and we were standing there. And a waiter saw us and ran over to us and said, I'll take you. We wanted to sit in this special area by the window. And so they were saying, the table's not ready. It's going to take a few minutes. But this server saw us, and she ran over to us. And say, oh, she went over, she took care of everything. When the anointing is on your life, God assigns people to help you. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Let it sink in your heart. Go back and watch it on. Go back and watch it. Go back and watch it on Facebook. And that's why you got to pray over your lost loved ones. You got to pray over them. I know they're cursing. I know they're doing bad things. But they can't run from the hounds of heaven. They can't outrun the hounds of heaven. Lord, I release your anointing over my lost loved ones. You're going to save them. Somebody say, save them. They can't outrun the hounds of heaven. The legs are too short. Raise your hand and say, Lord, save them by your power. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, I offer him to you. The greatest decision I ever made as a little 16, 17-year-old boy in a little church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, five miles from the beach. I gave my heart to the Lord. It was the greatest decision I ever made. From that decision, my life unfolded. 
My life unfolded. I went to college. God gave me a scholarship. I met my wonderful wife. He gave, she gave me wonderful sons and a daughter. Somebody say amen. God is good. Somebody say God. It's the greatest decision you can ever make. Tell your children. Don't listen to all the new religions out there. Stick with Jesus and the Bible. Stick with Jesus and the Bible. Somebody say amen. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him should not what? Perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Acts 4 and 12 said, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given to men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Would you stand with me? If you've got a loved one that needs to be saved, would you stand with me at this time and let's pray. Jesus, 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 stretch your elbow all the way up, and everybody say to me, say, Lord, thank you for saving our lost loved ones. Now everybody say to me, say, Lord, I release the anointing over their lives, wherever they are. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for all your strength. We are anointed to get the job done. Save them, Lord. Somebody say, 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 save them by your power. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God is a good God. He loves you. And then we just want to say that God is on your side. Somebody say the Lord is on my side. Say it again. The Lord is on my side. Somebody say the Lord is on my side. God's going to take care of your family. He's going to bring you through. Stir up that anointing in your life. Stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Tell your son who he is. Tell your daughter. A lot of times we worry about who my daddy is. I watch my wife go on her phone and, and she pull up Lauren Lake and she cast it to the TV. And they talk about, oh, I want to know who my daddy is. Oh, my dad ain't there. 40 year old women crying. 30 year old men crying. You said you was my daddy. That's important. But what's really important is God is my father. Thank you, Dad. But God is my father. I don't care if I never see him or whatever, but God is my help. Somebody say, help. You got to make God your father. Let your dad off the hook. He didn't know how to be a dad. Let him off the hook. God is your father. And won't he take care of you? Anybody here know the Lord's taking care of you? That's because you are his anointed child, and he will bless you. I'm going to ask my wife to come, and we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. Jordan, I hear that song. Thank you, Lord. Ring it in my soul. Minister Teresa, are you here? Can you sing thank you, Lord, for us? I just hear it ringing. I woke up this morning ringing. Hey, how you doing today? You know, God loves us. He loves his people and he anoints them to get through the pandemic and he blesses them and this morning I just want to say thank you for those of you that stood with the church and are still here thank you for giving some of you have been so faithful in giving and I just want to say thank you I hear it ringing I woke up this morning it was ringing thank you Lord for all you've done for me I ain't got no problem look at neighbors I ain't got no problem I know it's bad English, but say it anyway. Say, I ain't got no problem. You know, you're talking about the anointing, but there's an anointing in giving. 
There's a prosperity God, anointing. I'm going to be preaching on it in the days ahead. Go ahead. God partners with you or you partner with God. And we've seen it, I mean, in this past year and a half more than ever, how God will anoint and bless you. And as he blesses you, you bless the kingdom of God and you create the partnership. And it stirs that up. God, and it stirs up the anointing. It prosperity stirs up prosperity. Anointing. It stirs up, you know, what is that used to say? The more you give, the more he gives to you. Yes. So God blesses you as you bless the church. We just want to thank you. We've been able to help uh, missions in other countries and other nations. We've been pouring into the Philippines. They are almost have their church built, built. over there. We'll have they to wanted to name it Emmanuel. I said, no, I don't know y'all. <laughs> I only put my name behind people I know. Well, we we but I, I was we know, nice. I we didn't know, say it like we that. know them well enough that we know what they're doing. But and they're everything. doing a great work. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell them, you know, that you, you will we'll be. <laughs> so anyway, they're, they're, they almost have the entire church built. They're working yeah. on the ceiling out. But anyway, we want to thank you because as you have given, we've been able to bless uh, those other ministries and really pouring into them. God is doing a fabulous work around the world. Yes. There is so much going on. It's exciting. The salvations, it's exciting. The growth of families and the protection of persecuted countries. So we just want to say thank you and God bless you. Thank you. And then my friend in uh, back east has an anti-abortion center that we support and help. You know, we want every baby to have an opportunity because you never know who you're saving. When you get to heaven, God going to say you saved that little boy. Then he was the greatest evangelist in, uh, in the last end of the, of, of, of the decade. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. So I just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. God is a good God. He loves you. He'll give it back to you. You can't beat God giving it. And you are knowing it. You are anointed. You are anointed to be blessed by God. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, But you shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth you what? Power. In other words, the anointing to get what? Well. You are anointed to make money. Somebody say, I'm anointed to get well. So when money comes to your life, don't, 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 don't be moved by it. When big money shows up, don't be moved by it. I'm anointed. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Raise your hand and let's declare it together. Raise your hand with me and everybody say, Lord, I am anointed to get well. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Now I got to read the scripture, honey. Hold on just a minute. Mark 4.26 says, and Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man, if, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed shall spring up and grow and he knoweth not how for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the ear and after the full ear of the corn but when the fruit is brought forth immediately put it in the sickle because the harvest is come harvest only responds to seed you got to have seed in the ground got to have seed in the ground. Somebody say seed in the ground. Somebody say seed in the ground. Somebody say seed in the ground. If you need an envelope, the ushers will give you one. Ushers, if you, give, if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. They'll give you an envelope. But everybody give something and stir up the anointing upon your life. Stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. Somebody say stir it up. The enemy does not want you to partner with God, but I'm here to remind you to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Thank you, Lord. If the Lord's been good to you, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just say, thank you. The Lord brought you through COVID, just say, thank you. The Lord kept your family, just say, thank you. The Lord opened doors, just say, thank you. You may have had some battles, but you're going to get through them, just say, thank you that he brought you this far. God is a good God. Somebody say amen. God bless you and then God keep you. Victory belongs to the anointed saint of God. Somebody say amen. God loves you and everything's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. One more time. It's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God is a good God. He loves you. When you open your hand to God, he opened his big old hand to you, and he will bless you, and he will help you. 
Somebody say amen. Let us all stand tonight, this morning. I want to pray for you that the Lord will bless you. The Lord will help you financially. Raise your gifts all the way up to the Lord and everybody. And then God is going to bless you. Father, thank you for your people. I thank you for victory over every demonic force. That spirit of poverty must go now. Thank you for all your help. That spirit, I pray over every business. I pray over every man, every woman that have a business. And those businesses that are still in their spirit. I pray that you release them. Give them prosperity. Give them favor. Somebody just holler favor. Give them favor. You can build a business. The anointing of the Lord is upon your life. You have favor. God's power is stirred in your life. Stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Pray for those on their jobs. May you bless them on their jobs. Pray for those in their families. Meet every need. We pray that their income today will be their tithe tomorrow. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your help. Somebody shout, help. Thank you for all your help in their lives. I pray for the million dollar miracle. I pray for the million dollar miracle. The anointing of the million dollar miracle is upon their lives. The anointing for the million dollar miracle is upon their life to win souls when you bless them with it. To win souls. Not just to have a party, but to win souls. Everybody raise your hand and say with me. Say, Lord, I give it to your kingdom. I'm going forward in every area of my life. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life. I am blessed. Thank you. Somebody say thank you for all your help in my life. I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. If you give me, come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith. I just want to say thank you, Lord.
Lord, for all you've done. Raise your hand and let's just say thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you for being on live stream today. Thank you for being on Zoom. Thank the Lord for all of his goodness and all of his mercy in our lives today. We honor you. We worship you. Lord, stir up the anointing on every family of Emmanuel Christian Center. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you welcome Elder William Harris as he pronounced a blessing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying on this wise, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and the sons and the daughters of Emmanuel and I will bless them. Father, we thank you today for the anointing that works in every family. We praise you, Lord God, for the word of God that has been planted in our lives today to anoint our families with your own hands. Oh God, to establish the family with your anointing, to strengthen every family with your anointing. And Father, we pray that every foul devil, every foe of the enemy will be cast down, oh God, for every family. And Father, we thank you that you are faithful to us. Every family has experienced your faithfulness and great is your faithfulness unto us now god bless us protect us keep us as we leave this place in jesus name amen